Hi everyone, here we are to the final lesson of this journey into cell design. The aim of this course has been to give an insight of the various aspects of cell design and manufacturing in order to get a better picture of all the work that's behind a finished cell. So I wanted to make this course accessible to anyone, so to all sailors that want to know more about sales and not just to aspirant cell designers. For this reason, I chose not to make it too technical, avoiding too many formulas or equations that would have been difficult to understand for people without a technical background. But at the same time, though, I gave a lot of references for people that instead want to do more research. So I tried to share my knowledge and experience, um, which is a mix of academic background and a few years in the industry as cell designer. So let's try to put it all together, what we've seen so far. We covered four main broad topics in this course. First, we covered some introductory lessons for people who are less familiar with selling terms. And so we looked at different types of rigs that we can find out there. We look at the geometry of sales, introducing straight away some more technical definitions that are important in sales design. And here we spend some time describing each type of triangular cells and the ways it can be rigged onto a boat. I try to put a lot of photos from the sail lofts or from sea trials and testings. As I think that's because each boat is unique in its setup and it's very important to get familiar with all the different setups that we can have on a boat. The second main topic was about materials. So we started introducing woven materials and all the relevant terminology. We remember about warp, fill, crimp, bias, etc. And quickly we introduced laminate and fiber oriented cells as well to understand what op options are currently available. Then we define the most important material properties like the modulus, tenacity, etc and we spent some time going more into detail in the properties of the fibers making up the cells as the type of fiber in the cell it contributes to a great deal to the final characteristics of the material. We dedicated a lesson to describing the different construction methods of the cells so cross cut, triradial, etc. and introduced a few examples from real life. There's so many sail clothes type out there and so the list we made cannot be exhaustive but by now we should have the basis to understand the characteristics of a cloth by looking at how it's done and what fibers is made of. Third topic was cell aerodynamics. So here we got a bit more into the academic side of things. So we started talking about the generation of lift which is really the basis that makes possible for us to enjoy sailing. And then we spent some time describing the flow within the boundary layer, which is where things get interesting in terms of flows. And then we explore the pressures and aerodynamic forces on cells and the methods we use to calculate them. As you understood, there is a lot of interesting research on these topics and so much to study if you want to. Um, just to give you a reference, an example, in my PhD thesis, I focus simply on pressures and forces determination through full-scale testing and I ended up writing about 250 pages of dissertation with dozens of references to previous academic papers and this was just a tiny portion of the complex field of sail aerodynamics. Finally, we moved more in depth onto sail design. Also here, the topics to be covered are numerous and a lot of experience is needed to refine the sale design skills. So we decided not to do tutorials or some specific softwares as this just may not be in your aim as a student, but I try to make clear all the decisions that we've taken, that we take when we design a sale and all the challenges associated with it. So in this topic, we started discussing a typical sail design process. Then we moved in more detail on what can be achieved with a design software. 
And in this large topic, I also included some notions of sale manufacturing and the relationship between the design and manufacturing, as we understood that these two are very deeply related. And we closed off this topic by showing a typical sale inventory and give some hints on all the decisions to be made when deciding the best inventory for the application. So I really hope that this course has been useful for you to understand more about fascinating the fascinating world of sales and sales design and I hope it met your expectations about the course. Um, as I said several times there's a lot more to know and to be studied and I'll be happy to answer some questions that may have arisen during the course. So enjoy your sailing and hope to see you soon on future courses.